right, it is the holiday season and we know what happens and that is people get careless in a lot of different ways. And joining me now to help us with some very safe tips is my man, the myth, the legend, Brian of A. Brian, how you doing, man? Hey, Brad, how are you doing? Good. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. So, and this is the time of year, and I'm, you didn't want to say it, but I'm going to go ahead and say it, but people get stupid. And <laughs> the stupidness is that they pile stuff next to things that can cause fires, that can actually cause uh, carbon dioxide in their houses, and that's by their appliances that they don't think about. They're like, oh, it's just an empty box, or it's a Christmas stuff, we'll put it right there. But you're here to tell them, let's not be stupid, let's be smart. And, and what are some of those things that you guys see out there? Yeah, so a lot of times we see, you know, the big one is around the furnace or around the water heater. Um, a lot of times the uh, temporary storage areas are right there. You know, it's it's readily accessible. Yeah. Um, but you need to keep things, combustible things, uh, about 18 inches away. My rule of thumb is if you can touch the water heater or the furnace and you can touch the, the combustible, it's too close. Um, you know, if you have gas in your home, you should always have a carbon monoxide in that room. Um, you know, you see it all too often on the yeah. on the news. So. Let's talk about that because I think people are getting confused of having a smoke detector mm -hmm. and a carbon monoxide detector. Um, and they are two different things, but do they ever combine those? I, I think I've seen them combine. They do. Um, there, are, there are units out there that combine the two. Um, I like to have a dedicated one. Um, you know, the smoke detectors, uh, they say that they'll last about 10 years. Um, I like to say, you know, you need to replace your carbon monoxide detector about every five years. Um, and carbon monoxide is odorless, so you won't smell it. You won't know that you have that building up. You'll just go to bed at night and you won't get up. So yeah. it's very important. Yeah, and, and we do start to see that tragedy around the Christmas time because they are blocking things. So. All right, for that to like really kick off, what gets blocked? Like what, what's being blocked like on the, is it the, not just the furnace, but is it like the refrigerator and things like that? So, no, not the refrigerator, but um, say your uh, water heater or your stove or your furnace, um, these things can, they can either leak, they can have a cracked heat exchanger. Um, so that's why you need to have them serviced to make sure that those things are, are working properly. Um, the other thing is flus, you know, uh, squirrels and birds and such can, can get down in there and you haven't used it all summer and they've built nests or something in there. Yeah. And the, the gas is not escaping the way it should, so it forces it back into the home, which is horrible. It's terrible. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Um, speaking of getting things checked, this is the time to kind of like start getting things checked for the summertime but also checking your appliances and air conditioning and everything systems because we've had change of weather. And I didn't realize that, like even though we're here in you know, the desert, you know, we think about the summertime and you know, how it gets dry, but the wintertime also is a very important time because things can break easily. Yeah, um, there's things that you wanna do in the wintertime. Um, you know, like you said, even though we are here in the desert, uh, you have PBBs, which are the little devices uh, going to your irrigation pipes um, and your pools. Uh, those are typically on the outsides of the house. Um, you want to make sure those are covered, especially on the outskirts of the valley where the wind picks up and the temperatures drop. They can freeze and crack and uh, create a flood. Yeah, and again, and also about stacking stuff on that area outside. You said about the lights. I mean, we are, we're stringing lights in the house. You really want to pay attention to how you're stringing those and, and not think, well, it's just a light. It's going to be okay. Yeah, uh, you, want, you want to make sure that you're not putting things, uh, you know, static uh, electricity next to flammable things. Um, uh, but also uh, your condensers outside, the big air conditioner box that's sitting outside your home. Uh, I see a lot of times people take, summer's over, they take their pool stuff and they stack it on top. It's the area, it's around the corner of the house, nobody's gonna see it, it's great, it's good for the summer. No, that's horrible, especially if you have a heat pump. Um, that, that unit needs to run, it needs to maintain a certain uh, airflow. There it is. All right, I'm gonna switch gears, put you on the spot. And that's because you're looking like uh, Jolly St. Nick, and you were with your company. You, you're very yeah. proud of what you guys did for the community, aren't you? Yeah. So I mean, we, we you know, we like to give back, and uh, just uh, just this Saturday, we gave back to our employees. They're out there. They're working hard every day. They're making it for us. Um, so we had a big party. Uh, I think we were just under 100 uh, people there, kids, families. Um, 
I dressed up like Santa Claus <laughs> in the bull in the full getup. Um, and a little fake beard. I even fooled my own kids. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you get out there and you hand out the presents to the little ones. And, uh, you know, you give uh, a white elephant gift to, you yeah. know, your coworkers. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun and a lot of camaraderie. And uh, I think that's the reason we, we have such success with yeah. uh, keeping our employees. Yeah, and keeping them happy. And speaking of that, uh, I know we're wrapping up, but I want to uh, make sure you let people know that going in 2022, you are looking for employees to be a part of your team, especially as we start to see people coming back to work and everything. So how can they uh, get a hold of you? Yeah, we're always looking for good employees, um, and you can reach us at 623-521-1172 or goforapes.com um, is our website, and you can email me at brian at goforapes, and that's B-R-I-A-N at G-O, the number four, uh, A-P-E-S dot com. Perfect. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Brian. Merry Christmas. All right, there you go. All right. Hey, we got more of the mix. Thank you.